first life the defense has shown. Um, probably the best practice we've had defensively and since we came out of uh, shorts. Uh, shorts was kind of everybody ties, you know, because we put the pads on. Defense has struggled a little bit, but they made a lot more plays today. I thought the energy was really good out there for the defense, a lot of enthusiasm, uh, not so much for the offense. But that's kind of how this spring has gone. One side or the other has gone a little bit better, but we'll open it up there. You said the defense kind of bouncing back. Is that kind of part of your, your plan, so to speak, to kind of when you build up the offense like that, to kind of get those guys to respond to fire up by what you're I don't saying? have a plan. We just let happen what happens. Yeah. I mean, it's not a plan. I wouldn't say I was planning on getting ran through in the scrimmage the other day. Yeah. That wasn't part of a plan, no. Yeah. The plan is to hit people, tackle people, strike people, practice good football. So it's not part of the plan, no. I mean, it was, the plan was to go out there and have the kids get better. I'm not looking for one side or the other to win. I'm looking for both sides to compete and do really good. I like it when they both compete. We get a lot of good competition in special teams, but I mean, we've had days where we're up and down, but it's not part of a plan, no. Kirby, you've talked about situational football. Uh, you know, like, going, for example, going back to the uh, Tech game, Vanderbilt yeah. in, uh, in Tennessee, specifically, uh, is that stuff you set aside a lot of practice time to cover? And have you already gone over that? Just talk about that a little bit. Yeah. What's situational. The well, basically every day we start our team meeting with another situation in our meeting. We have the entire team in here, and we go through a situation. One of them might be two minutes. The offense has to get a first down to win the game. We had that situation come up Tennessee. We weren't able to do it. And then we had to stop them because we had a sack fumble. So we did stop them. We got the ball back. We did score. So what we've tried to do is replay the situation. I spent a lot of time this all season talking to NFL teams because these NFL teams now, guys, they deal with this – like every game, I mean, every game comes down to that. College football, you know, I think 50% or something of our games come down to one score. So if that's the case, we've got to simulate those. So situationally, every single day except the first practice, we had to end the game situation at practice. I think it makes Jacob a lot better, makes Jake Fromm a lot better, and defensively it's been great. I mean, we even had a situation the other day that we were going to clock the ball with the clock we're running. Actually, we had a first down, and we went and spiked the ball. The guy jumped off sides in the game through a 10-second runoff. So we start the whole meeting with that. And I think that kids can learn a lot from these situations. I mean, uh, Jay Johnson's a guy from, from Minnesota. He brought like a list of situations they did. That's so invaluable to me because you try to simulate those. You talk to other coaches, and you try to simulate them. So we've done a lot of that this spring. I saw D'Angelo leave uh, pretty early on. How is he doing, and what does he have? Well, considering I haven't had a lot of time to, to talk to the trainers, but it's nice to know that you guys have found it in your hearts to go ahead and report it. So his mom has to find out from you guys rather than from us, which upsets me a little bit, to be honest with you. I don't think it's really fair. So we'll make some changes for you guys and try to handle that a little better from now on. A lot of talk goes with the offense and defense early on this spring. What have you seen out of the special team units so far? How are you pleased with where they're at, or do you think they need to improve? I mean, that's the hardest part to judge because we do offense, defense live. You know, we tackle, we scrimmage. You don't really do special teams because of the collisions live. We go as close to live as we can, and we focused on them a lot. Um, Rodrigo's done a good job, a much better job with kickoffs. Um, Cam's punted some nice balls. He's been a little up and down, but he's punted some good balls. So it's hard to say where we are in that perspective. I am comfortable with the work we've gotten done. Our kids really challenge each other out there in those drills, special teams wise. I mean, we had Sonny Michelle going against Lorenzo Carter in a punt, punt return drill, and they're life or death competing out there. I love that. I mean, I love that. But um, it's really hard to measure because we don't have live situations. How much is Cam going to push Marshall? <clears throat> I expect a lot. You know, I mean, it's hard to say because. Marshall's not kicking yet, and he's coming back. He's slowly getting his motion back, but he's not 100% comfortable yet. And Cam's putting all these balls right now. So I expect it to be a really good battle in the fall, fall camp. But Cam, I mean, Cam's had good averages for the spring, hang and average. So that's good. I haven't seen Mitchell Watson. Is he still uh, with the team? Is he still practicing at all? No, Mitchell's not with us anymore. So I don't be with us anymore. Back to the defense, one of the players, you know, they had mentioned that it would, the way they've been playing had been addressed after the scrimmage. Was that brought on by you, Coach Tucker, or was that more or less led by the, the players themselves? Oh, no, all of the above. I mean, we addressed it. I mean, 
certainly as the leader of the organization, we addressed it. We didn't have real good scrimmage. We were very honest. Um, they did some good things in the scrimmage. It wasn't all bad. We showed the good, we showed the bad, and then we go into a defensive meeting and we explain what we did statistically, which wasn't very good. And then Coach Tucker, he talked to him about it, and some of the players talked about it. So it, I can't say it was a lot better Tuesday, but it was uh, it was a lot better today. Kirby, you talked to Ed Ashoff about the team uh, buying in, I guess, better than, than uh, they did last season. You know, so the term uh, "fat apple" was used in, in the story. Is that kind of common? Do you think for a first-year coach to? You know, no, I don't think it's necessarily common. I think uh, it's more it's more common to have more buy-in the second year because you're second year into a relationship with somebody. So the longer you know people, obviously the better the relationship you have is. And so for every kid on this team, it's at least the second year. Some of them first that are just got here in the mid years. But that's the biggest reason is you know them better, that you know how to push their buttons better. So it's better uh, buying. Is that your term or Ed's term? That <coughs> I'm not sure. To be honest with you, both of I think you said last Saturday it seemed like both offense and defense are sustaining focus, but like today, the defense just taking that focus, just executing better, pure execution. I, I couldn't say, to be honest with you, there was a lot more physicality as far as energy, enthusiasm, knock back. I'll have to watch the tape before I can actually say completely statistically, but there was a lot more thumping going on, a lot more knocking back on the defensive side of the ball. Kirby Nature said the other day that he, he's gotten more comfortable with knowing the defense now, and he's kind of tried to mentor the younger linebackers. Have you seen him take steps this spring, this spring as far as being more of a vocal leader for the whole unit? Yeah, well, I think Nature has come a long way. But he's much more comfortable doing it. And look, I mean, Nature is not the perfect player. I mean, he's got to get better too, but he's not afraid to accept his criticism or when he doesn't do something right, he understands that you're only trying to make him better. And I really think it's important as players that when a coach delivers you a message, the message is only trying to benefit you. Don't take it as criticism. Take it as an opportunity to get better. It's a challenge, and Natrez has done that. Kirby, um, guys like Matthew Stafford and Aaron Murray had huge jumps from the freshman year to sophomore year. Uh, what do you think the biggest change was that for them, and do you see that change happening in Jacob right now? It's hard to say what the biggest change for them was. I mean, I wasn't a part of that. I don't really know. <clears throat> I wasn't here um, offensively to see it or witness it. But I certainly think that Jacob is making a stride of progress. Just his awareness of situational football, his decision-making, his throws into tight windows. I mean, I feel like he's growing as a quarterback. Am I ready to say he's Aaron Murray or Matt Stafford? No, don't write that because that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is he's growing as a player. What kind of strides he made in the film room in preparation along those lines? He's done a much better job. He and uh, I think Jake is the biggest reason because Jake's in there wanting to watch all the time. So if that's the case, then I got to watch too. And he understands it better. And I think he enjoys it more than it too because he sees the value. He's starting to get some return on investment for the amount of time he spends watching Jake. For example, when, when you say that, what do you mean he's getting the I mean, return? He watches it. He knows the coverage. He knows where to go with the ball. Then he goes out on the field. He sees the coverage. He played it in the film room. Boom, he makes a quick decision. Ball's out. The line doesn't look as bad because the ball's out. The ball's zipped there super fast. So now the defensive back's further away, and he's running down the field turned up rather than catching it late. So he, it makes an effect on the overall offense, just the fact that he has a little more awareness. Yeah, Coach Cheney uh, has the background with uh, Coach Linehan. Uh, somebody uses the slot a lot. I mean, how valuable is, is that slot receiver position, especially with all the guys you got working there right now? That's what you guys want to do. Well, I think first evidence is look at last year. You know, where was our leading receiver? And, uh, and there's a lot of production in that position. So that's a big challenge for us. And I'll tell you, man, when you look at practice, Terry Gava, it's like night and day to me to watch that kid. And I was, you know, very honest last year about Terry playing tougher, playing bigger. I mean, the guy's blocking hard. He's competing. He's taking more reps. He's such a better leader. I mean, to see him grow up, is, it means the world to me because I've seen that kid since his ninth grade year. And uh, he's a vital piece of that slot. He and Jacob got great yes, intuitive instincts. I mean, they just they got great intuition of where each other's going to be. Kirby, there's, I guess they're going to vote tomorrow on these yeah. changes to ensure the 10th assistant are in favor of. What do you think of the, the rule on hiring people or preventing the hiring of people that are associated with? Yeah, I've got a hard time on that as a son of a high school coach and uh, a guy who has seen tons of high school coaches go on to greater success.
Kevin Sheriff, Hugh Freeze, Gus Malzahn, Jeremy Pruitt. I mean, I just the name goes on and on. A lot of the best coaches I've ever been around have been high school coaches. We get ideas from them. I know a lot of you guys think those guys don't know what they're talking about. They face more of the offenses that we face. So they have to find ways to stop them and create plays. Um, so, so many guys that I respect are now being cut out of it. Now, they'll argue that they're not being cut out. It's only the ones that have prospects. But is that fair to cut out a guy because he has a prospect from an opportunity to develop his career and move on? I think it's cutting the lifeline out of our program base. I mean, where do we get our lifeline from? We have to go to the NFL now and get coaches. Where do you develop coaches from? They develop from high school up. So I'm not, and that doesn't fire me up. I certainly don't like hiring a guy to get a player either. So it's a fine line. If Last they, question. If they pass the 10th assistant thing, will you, I mean, Jay Johnson's here on staff, or, yeah. are you going to make a move right away? Well, you can't make a move away. It's, it's, it's got an uh, effective date for January. January next year. January of next year, because they, they would have mass chaos. Imagine this. I Jay think I thought that. that they're, they're considering making it effective next week, but the Mid-American Conference proposed. <coughs> I'm not aware today. of that, Seth. That's the case. We were told it would not be until January because of the chaos it would create. Obviously, if they do make it effective, then we'll push on and we'll try to make the best decision possible. But there's no given. That we, there was no promises made to anybody to come here that you'll get the 10th assistant. There'll be consideration, and we'll look for the best available guy for our staff. Thanks, guys. Thank you.